Hey guys, in this lesson, I'm going to introduce you to Newton's corpuscular model of light. Now, although this model is usually attributed to Isaac Newton, it wasn't Isaac Newton who proposed it for the first time. Although Isaac Newton was, a per was the person who did develop it much further and brought it to its present glory, using which we are able to explain so many phenomena shown by visible light and other forms of electromagnetic radiation nowadays shown by it. There are two people, very important people in this field. One of them is Isaac Newton himself, but another person is usually not given any credit for it, although he must. This course and this lesson has been designed and taught by me, Samip Velani. And if you like my work, if you'd like to share your concerns, your views, please follow me on this link and you'll be notified about my future lessons and courses so that you can keep up with my work as well. You can rate my work, give your reviews, and please comment as, as many times uh, or as and when you can if you have any concerns or suggestions or any questions if you have in the discussion or the comment section because only then will I know what you think about my lectures and how I should go about it in the future. Express your pleasure or even displeasure if you have any because your enthusiasm is very contagious because if you are enthusiastic, I'll be enthusiastic to teach you and that is a very essential part of my teaching you because if I'm not interested in teaching you, you won't be e interested either to learn from me or learn with me, in fact. So please express your pleasure as and when you can. As, a, as compared to the entire electromagnetic spectrum that we have learned in the, in the past courses, the electromagnetic spectrum is a vast one, but we human beings are only sensitive to a very small part of it, which we call visible light, which lies in the range of the frequency of 10 raised to 14 to 10 raised to 15 hertz, and in the wavelength range of 400 to 700 nanometers. What we do know about light, and we also did know about light at the time, is that it travels at a very fast speed. The speed of light was later found out to be the fastest that anything can travel in vacuum. The speed of light is a fundamental constant and is the speed limit for any thing, any material object, any information in fact. Even information cannot travel faster than light under any circumstances. But it does not mean that light is always the fastest in every medium. There are situations where the speed of light is slower than some other energy transportation, that, than some other energy transmission, which is faster than light in that particular medium. If you would like to know about this particular phenomena that I'm talking about right now, please mention in the comments section, I'll give you a link, and I'll give you something to think about, because there are regions where you do not have to believe everything for granted. You can think about, you can think about how it could be wrong as well. Now the visible, visible light ranges from violet to red, ranging from around 350 or 400 nanometers till around 750 nanometers which is a very short range in the entire electromagnetic spectrum that there is. Our eyes are just sensitive to a very small part of it. Now, we are going to invoke a very specific theory in this course, that is, the ray theory of light, or in other words, the geometrical optics theory, which will assume that light travels at its speed, the speed of light, and it travels in a rectilinear fashion. It travels in straight lines, in other words. Now, why would a wave, which we, have, which we know light to be from the past courses, that every electromagnetic radiation is a wave, how can a wave be traveling in a single direction? How can we understand that? Now, in order to 
give a good understanding to this, consider this. The wave optics behavior, the wave optical behavior of electromagnetic radiation only comes, only becomes significant when the radiation is passing through a slit or an orifice which is of the order or smaller than the wavelength of light which is passing through that space. As you see in this case here, where the lambda, which that is the wavelength of this plane wave seen here, and it is the distance between consecutive flat lines seen here, that is the wavelength of light. And as you also see, the slit width here is of the order of the wavelength as well, as, as such. So you see a spherical wave front coming into the picture on the other side of the slit. So wave optics is the dominant character. But when the slit width or the orifice through which the light is passing is much larger than the wavelength of the light, which is shown here, then light does seem to behave as a beam of, as a beam of rays, many straight line path energy transmissions. It, it does behave like a ray as it is traveling in a straight line forming a very sharp shadow in this region and this region and forming a bright spot here. That is why we can understand light's behavior when the path of light or the slit width in this sense is much larger than the wavelength of light we are using to understand that concept. So under certain circumstances, ray optics does help us and does simplify the problems. Now the real proponent of the corpuscular theory of light was René Descartes, who was a very important contemporary of Isaac Newton at the same time as Newton was doing his work in the same field of optics. Both of them wrote seminal pieces in their own languages and in their own fashion on optics, as shown here, which is the discourse of method as translated from French. And even Newton wrote a very seminal account of his experimental observations in optical experiments in his treatise called Optics. Now there are several achievements of achievements that are usually attributed to Newton, such as Newton's first law. Newton's first law was not given by Newton at all. It was just refined by Newton. It was really proposed by René Descartes himself. So there are many things that René Descartes is not given credit for, but he should have. Now, why hypothesize a corpuscular model for light? Why does it seem to behave as a particle and not a wave? Now, it was observed by several experiments that when light is incident on a flat, smooth surface, the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. That is, the angle of incidence here is always equal to the angle of reflection, which is exactly what you would expect. If light behaved as a massless, elastic corpuscle or a light particle that is being bombarded on this flat surface, and it's being deflected on the opposite side in such a fashion that this being the normal, the incident angle and the reflected angle is always the same. And all these rays, the normal and these two rays, lie on the same plane. These are the two laws of reflection that you will learn about, that you are learning about in fact. So the, the reflection of light is being explained by the corpuscular model. What else can it explain? The corpuscular model was also able to explain the, re, the phenomenon of refraction in which light seems to be bending towards the normal or away from the normal as, as the case may be when, the light, when light is traveling from one medium to another medium. Now, the, the theory of gravity was already in the picture, was already developed by Isaac Newton at this time. What he proposed is, when light is traveling in a rarer medium, there is almost no net force being applied by the, the rarely concentrated, the, ra the rarely dense 
particles of air or any such rare rare medium so there is no net force on the light particles which are traveling in a straight line so no deviation is caused no acceleration no change in direction it just travels in a straight line path as it would have if it behaved as a particle and when it changed the med its medium from a rarer medium to a denser medium in the denser medium the particles of that medium are very close together and as a result of that there will be a net force on the light particles in one direction as opposed to another direction as you see here there is more force in this direction than that direction as a result of the densely packed molecules of that medium and this is what isaac newton believed is deflecting the light ray towards the normal and when it again comes out back into the rarer medium it again deflects back on the same line path parallel to its original path in the first medium so this is how corpuscular theory does explain reflection and refraction what it couldn't explain is this phenomena that when you have a very wet surface and light is falling on a thin oil layer on the wet surface you see these colored rings patterns this could not be explained by corpuscular theory because that would have made isaac newton invent different photons different kinds of photons having different energies or different light different kinds of light particles in fact the photon term hadn't come up different kinds of light particles had to be invented which he did not want to because that would have made the theory more complex but later on another person came into the picture which and proposed a theory that is the wave theory of light by christian huygens his theory could very well explain this phenomena although nobody took him seriously because newton was much more famous and they took newton's word as the final word as opposed to christian huygens who was not as famous as newton although they were both contemporaries people only started to take huygens for seriously when there were more experimental results to prove his theory about a century later what newton also could not explain is this partial reflection effect that you see that you see the reflection of the mountains which are on the other side of this lake in this the on the lake surface but what you also see is the lake bed here why is this happening why are some photons being reflected from the mountain to you but the mountains photons are falling here but they are not reflected to you as the mountains part but what you see is what is beneath the water surface there the lake bed why are some photons reflected and some are not this could not be explained by newton very well using the corpuscular model some other model had to be developed but what we will learn in this course will just need the corpuscular model and nothing else that will simplify our problems greatly thank you for listening kindly brainstorm about what you have learned so far for a few minutes give some time to it if you have any questions please ask in the comment section thank you